I can't believe I read 30 books in February and the fact that I read all the books on my TBR in a month is absolutely insane to me. Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna dive into every single book I read in February. I've never had a better reading month. There was just something in the air in February. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna try and sum up all the 30 books I read in February in three sentences or less so that you guys come out of this video with really good recs and new books to add on to your TBR and we don't have to be here for 40 minutes because I could go on and on and on about books every single day. I'm gonna have the rating, the spice level, whether or not they're on Kindle Unlimited, and some of the tropes in the books up above. So if you guys want to learn more about the book, you guys can pause the video to read more about it. Before we get into the video, let's talk statistics. I track everything I read on Notion and Goodreads. I read 30 books in February and I feel like I keep saying that, but like it's really become my new personality because I don't think I'm ever gonna beat this record. 30 books comes out to around 8,472 pages and I really ran with the romance theme this month because the genre breakdown was 27 romances, five were sports romances, three were dark romances, eight were novellas, and then other than that I read one fantasy and two literary fiction. I'm editing this video right now and I genuinely forgot to include two books and it wasn't even books that I hated. They were like probably some of the top reads I've had this month. This first book I read on Kindle Unlimited but it was so good I immediately ordered it off Amazon and it is Picking Peaches by Ansley B. Calloway. This book was literally like Ansley B. Calloway asked me what I was looking for in a man, wrapped him in a bow, and named him Ashton Reed because Ashton Reed in this book is absolutely incredible. He is a single dad, he plays volleyball, he's like a true southern gentleman, and he is so sweet. There was no third act breakup in this book, there's no miscommunication, literally five out of five stars. I'm so heartbroken that I forgot this because you guys have to pick this up if you're in the mood for any sort of small town romance. This next book I forgot is a 4.75 stars. It's Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I'm a little bit conflicted with this book because this book gave me all the five star feelings. It brought me on a roller coaster of emotions. I was kicking my feet giggling and all the words and lines that came out of Kai's mouth literally left me breathless. My problems with this book line the writing and the fact that there were a couple of plot holes where I was like hmm and then there were also quite a bit of typos but other than that the vibes of this book were so close to like fourth wing hunger games like all the classics I seriously can't believe I forgot to include these but we have 28 other books to get into so I hope you guys enjoy today's video the very first book I read of the month was the score by L Kennedy which was on my TBR and I gave this book three stars I was so excited to read Allie and Dean's book for as cute as they were I was cringing a little bit too much for my liking and I did absolutely love summer which was Dean's little sister not only did I read the score by Al Kennedy, but I also picked up The Goal by Al Kennedy and The Legacy by Al Kennedy. So I finally finished the entire off-campus series. I gave The Goal 2.5 stars. Tucker is an absolute saint and Sabrina was a badass. I just wasn't a fan of the pregnancy trope and the dirty talk in this book had me actually questioning what I was reading. I also gave The Legacy 2.5 stars. I just felt like it was a little bit unnecessary. There was a lot of miscommunication on like repeat in this book. After finishing the entire series, I will say that Garrett and Hannah reign supreme as my favorite couple. The only thing that comes close is the romance between Logan and Garrett. I will stand by them. And then I finished Ruined Secrets, the fourth book in the Perfectly Imperfect series by Neva Altja, and I gave that book two stars. This book just wasn't it. I never thought I'd say this, but I think there was too much spice in this book. I actually had to draw a line. Next, I Hope You Find This by Anne Liang. I gave this book three stars. It was such a fun read. Even though I was expecting more K-drama vibes, Anne Liang perfectly encapsulated the feelings of growing up with immigrant parents, and also all the thoughts that come along with having a high school crush. And it really threw me back in time. I feel like when I was, if I was younger and I read this I would absolutely eat it up. Not only did I pick up The Worst Best Man off my TBR but I also picked up The Wedding Crasher by Mia Sosa. I gave both of these books four stars and not only is this duet laugh out loud funny but both of the men in these books worship the ground that their woman walks on. I also absolutely love their Brazilian family and the fake dating dynamic in both of these books. Then we shifted from rom-com to literary fiction. I picked up If All the Cats Disappeared from the World by Genki Kawamura and I gave this book four stars. It was a really quick read that really shows how immaterial materialism really is and how easily our egos make us lose sight of the essence of life and being present in the moment. The Fake Mate by Lana Ferguson. I gave this book 2.5 stars, read it as a follow-up to Bride, but it did not live up. I just wasn't vibing with the shifter dynamic, but I highly recommend The Nanny by Lana Ferguson. It's so much better. This next series that I binge is probably the reason why I was able to finish 30 books instead of like 24 books in February because this six book series the best ones were The Exception to the Rule by Christina Lauren, Worst Wingman Ever by Abby Jimenez, and With Any Luck by Ashley Poston. You don't even need to read the rest because those were perfection. Fake Start by Jasmine Miller. I gave this book 2.5 stars. Super quick read, but Jasmine does more child nut show, so it was really hard for me to connect and root for the main couple. Then we have my very first one star of 
2024, even if it hurts my Marnie man. Honestly, I'm still trying to wipe my memory of this book and the plot because the ending was atrocious. My next read was way better. I read Twisted Hate by Anna Fong, four stars. The hate to love tension that just never let down was absolutely incredible. I don't know why it took me so long to pick this up. It didn't live up to any of the hate at all. The banter was so funny, but where was all the groveling? The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, five freaking stars. How is this book not a movie yet? This book felt so real to me. Evelyn Hugo is so real to me and I absolutely love her. This read is how I feel like getting all of the tea from Taylor Swift about all of her exes feels like. Next is a book that my best friend picked out for my TBR. It is P.S. You're Intolerable by Julia Wolf. I gave this book four stars. This book did the pregnancy trope right. It was grumpy sunshine and a billionaire spoils you. It had me kicking my feet giggling. What I loved most though was the witch and how the relationship progression was so true to both of their characters. I did minus one star because there was miscommunication that just felt so random. Then I picked up Where's Molly by H.G. Carlton and oh my god did H.G. Carlton deliver. This book absolute perfection. It was so nice to be back in the Cat and Mouse universe and I'm absolutely obsessed with how H.G. Carlton's mind works and how creatively she sets up future books like I need them now. I also continued with the Hollow Knight series by Lee Jacoy. I picked up the Valentine's Day one, Cupid's Peak, the perfect Valentine's Day novella. I didn't expect a second chance jock and nerd plotline but it was the perfect balance of sugar and spice. I gave this book four stars, highly recommend. The next few I read in my reading blog where I attempt to finish 29 books by the end of the month. If you guys are curious, as to how I read 30 books in a month, then definitely check that video out. Because at the end of that reading vlog, I talk about all the tips and tricks I use to read a lot more. The very first book I read in that video was Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I gave this book 4.5 stars. I read Yours Truly, which is the second book in this interconnected standalone. Even though that book minorly spoils this book, I kept reading this book because of Alex and Daniel's sweet chemistry and all of their inside jokes. They're just so cute. And then I picked up Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. Five stars. This book was pure perfection. Christian is my favorite Twisted Men. Red flags where? Because in my eyes, Christian can do no wrong. The next book, Fighting Silence by Ali Martinez, 2.5 stars. Didn't think I'd ever hate childhood friends to lovers, but this book proved me wrong. I wasn't attached to any of the characters, but I absolutely loved all the boxing elements. The Bug of Azrael by Amber Nicole, I gave this book 3 stars. I'm happy I finally read it, but it didn't live up to the genuine enemies to lovers hype. The banter was alright, but the touch her and die trope was so strong in this book. It was my favorite one where the guy is super composed and just proper until you touch a singular hair on her body and he goes absolutely feral. That trope is super superior. Then I read Stable Peak by Devonie Perry. I gave this book four stars, the perfect end to an incredible series. I said it in that video and I'll say it again, I'm never gonna stop recommending the Eden series by Devonie Perry because of the amount of unconditional love in this book and the found family aspect. This is just small town done right. If you love the Chestnut Spring series, then go pick this up because this and that are like tied for my top favorite small town romance series. After having read so many books, I just wanted a quick novella to end the month at an even 30. So I picked up Petty Cupid by Sarah Blue, but I gave this book two stars stars because this book was so weird. It was trying to be relatable because the main character was a reader so even though the book had insta love and miscommunication the book would then make fun of itself for having tropes that everybody hated and then it also randomly included lavender haze which I was like okay. <laughs> If you guys want a longer review for any of the books that I read, then check out my Goodreads down below. Comment down below your favorite book that you read in February. I think mine is probably tied Twisted Lies, Powerless, and Picking Peaches. I can't pick between the three, but subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!